Jeff Fennick, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. First of all, how are you holding up after that scare a month ago? You had a blocked heart valve? Yeah, that was uh, pretty scary. Uh, just a couple of hours away from death. Had my uh, friends not brought the ambulance to my room, I wouldn't be here today and I wouldn't be able to uh, try to do what I'm doing today and I want to make people aware of brain injury and I want people to know that um, it's very, very serious. Yeah. And um, you know, We have brothers, sisters, mothers, wives who have to look after us all the time and um, I want them to, to be as um, comfortable as uh, yeah. they can be through um, hopefully all the help I can give. Yeah, and you've only just come off a drip after that recent scare? Yeah, um, today's yeah, the first still day I <laughs> haven't had a 24-hour... No, no, the drip's not here. It's just uh, where the tube was in placed in my arm, to, into my heart. So it's just... Uh, it's been 24 hours since I've been able to sleep freely, not worry about this bottle dropping out and the drip <laughs> falling out. But uh, look, I feel really great and I'm so grateful to the people who helped me. Yeah, but even over that last week, you've kept up training Jack Brubaker for a fight coming up soon? Yeah, we've got a press... Conference day at 11 o'clock, Jack versus Tim Zhu, uh, which is going to be a great fight. Now, I'm trying to do my best, am I? You know, of course, I, I, I'd done a deal with him months ago to help him, and I um, wasn't going to let nothing stop me. And whether I was sick or not, I've been at the gym every day with him, going through everything. And hopefully today will be the first day I'll be able to physically work with him because I feel yeah. good, and um, I'm looking forward to that. So have you kind of been on the drip while you've been <laughs> at, that, at the boxing ring training him? Yeah, there's been a drip uh, in my pocket or in a, in a bum bag that I <laughs> have had, um, like I said, a 43 centimetre tube going to my heart, um, giving me antibiotics for 24 hours a day. But uh, like I said, finally yesterday it came off after seven weeks and I'm pretty relieved. Yeah. OK, now you've decided to donate your brain to science. When did you make that decision? Uh, I, I donated it, but I, hopefully they're going to find something this silly head of mine. But um, <laughs> no, I really... I, 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 I am, look, I've just seen so many people that aren't well and I'm thinking, um, uh, one of my close friends, Mario Fennick, who um, you know, he's um, suffering from, uh, you know, dementia and stuff at, at, a, at a young age and he's such a beautiful person and his wife, Rebecca, has like, got a 24-hour job looking after him and I just thought it's time that we, we speak up and we tell the truth and let's get this out there, let people know how important this is and what a major, what a major disease it is. I mean, and people don't realise how people get so frustrated and they go and commit suicide. It's happened in America for years. It's happened in Australia and we don't even know about it. Mm -hmm. Some of the rugby league players have gone and done things and some of the rugby league players today, they aren't well and, and, and they need help and they need the support of the NRL, they need the support of the Australian public. I know the doctors and the people at the Brain Bank are trying their best to help them, so I'll put my hand up to be the first to really volunteer and do whatever I can do to, to make this uh, an easier place for, like I said, the mums and dads, the brothers and sisters and the children that are, uh, that are looking after and caring for these people who aren't well. Now, we're just seeing some shots of you in action. Now, you went through uh, 22, 226 rounds all up through your career, I think. Three-time world champ. You had an amazing win record, but a couple of TKOs. Were there a couple of times when you remember it was really tough to recover from concussion? Yeah, well, you don't really remember once you concussed. And then, uh, but I, I, can, I can tell a story that um, in one of my fights um, that... As I, I got knocked out so badly that my, my mouth was very, very badly cut. So my mouth was hanging down, my top lip was hanging down on my bottom lip. And um, they had to tie me up in the ambulance because I kept trying to pull it and rip it off because I, I just felt some discomfort. So, um, look, um, concussion isn't good and I've, I've suffered a, f a fair few. And, um, you know, you, you suffer more. You might have counted those rounds that I've fought, actually. But the, the amount of rounds I've sparred are thousands and thousands. And, um, we, like I said, we need to protect these people. We need to put in... A better place. We need we need people that are that are more educated to help these people. Yeah, to make sure that we can we can um, mm -hmm. you know make it as less uh, brain damage as we can. Yeah. And have you had any issues with memory lately? Well, to be honest, like I said, I'm one of the honest guys. Though. Like I said, um, yeah, I've had uh, like you know, uh, yeah, I forget things and. Uh, but look, I've had all these tests and all the tests that, uh, have come back positive for me. But well, you sound pretty sharp to me. I, you know. Yeah, but I still have problems where I tell somebody I'm going to be there in 20 minutes and I've forgotten that or I, I you know, forget what I've done yesterday. But look, I'm not sure if that's through brain damage or because I've got so much on my head and so much stress and pressure that, I, that, I, that I've been going through of late. But like I said, um, 
whatever it is, I want to help these other people who, who have mm. it, and I want to donate my brain, and hopefully, like I said, they'll, uh, it'll be a, you know, an amazing um, start from people to, to do as much as we can for these people with brain damage. Yeah. And so how do you feel about boxing now, not knowing the damage it can cause? Do, do you still love it? Well, of course I love it, but I, I am also train some young boys, and I train a kid by the name of Brock Jarvis, who I love like my son, and I'd hate to think that in years down the track that something would be wrong with him. So um, I try my best that if, if he even gets a little concussion, we have weeks off. I'm, I'm, I try to do everything um, to the best of my ability. Look, this kid wants to fight, you know, and they, and they know the risk when they step in the ring. We all know what happens when we go to, on the football field. We know what happens. But uh, listen, um, there are people out there, outside the ring, outside the football field, that can prevent that if something happens. Not take you off and put you back on, or they've got to take you off and look after them. They've got to think of life after rugby league, they've got to think of life after boxing, and, 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 and so on. So do you believe with increased knowledge and management that, that boxing can be a safe sport and you, you can avoid brain damage later on? Well, I'd like to think so. I'd like to think that we'll, we'll come to a conclusion or we'll come to a, an amazing way that we can make these boys during sparring not hit each other in the head. Well, listen, our, our job is to knock the other person out. When we train, we try to knock somebody out. When we, when we spar, when we fight, we try to knock people out. So it's a very, very hard thing to, um, you know, to, to overcome. But like I said, I'm sure that we can all sit together with people who know about sport and, and the doctors and come up with some skill drills where we can do in training where it's not as, it's not as physical, it's not as hard. Mm. And um, look, like I said, um, I might, my, this might sound weak coming from somebody who's supposed to be this tough guy, but I, like I said, um, I, I believe that um, saving one life is more important than any, any world title I've ever won. Yeah. And would you want your kids to get into boxing? Uh, well, definitely not. Um, not knowing. I, I know what I went through, not just, and I don't mean just the punches in the head, but dieting, not eating for days, having to take things to go to the tour. Yeah, no, I would, I would, I would want nobody to, to do it. The people who do it love it and they're, they're dedicated, so I help them. I try to, I try to put the, the, my, what I do at the moment is I put my athlete first. I forget about the boxing. I forget about the rewards of boxing. I look after the, my, my boxer first. And then I, you know, if we, if we can get through without getting hurt and we can win something special, well and good. If they can save their money and put it away and have a property um, later on in life, well and good. But I'm, my, my main um, object these days is the, the health and safety of, my, of the person I'm looking after. Yeah. And so on that point, is Jack Brubaker looking good for a victory up against uh, Zoo this, kind, this coming Friday night, isn't it? Yeah, this Friday night at the uh, ICC at Darling Harbour. But listen, um, he's, he's in for a real tough fight. Tim's much bigger than him. So listen, like I said, um, we've prepared for the fight. If he can um, put everything together on the night, I think that we could cause an upset. But if he can't and it's not going well, um, I'll cause an upset because I'll be stopping the fight. He will not be getting hurt. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Jeff Fennick, thanks so much for talking to us. Uh, good on you for donating your brain and effort to uh, help people in the sport in future. And to you guys, thank you, because we need people to know. We can't, we can't sell nothing without people seeing it. We can't make anything better unless people see it and realise how bad this is. And um, thank you guys so much. Okay, cheers. Jeff Fennick there in Sydney.